my name is Tina and welcome to the G Sport Hub. And actually welcome to the first playoff check. Is it the first? Let, let's go the first. This is the pilot episode. This is what happens before the storm, before playoffs. And talking about playoffs, we have now a new format. It's going to be a single elimination with a third place match. And the reason we have a third place match is we have three seats to PCS playoffs. I'm gonna talk about that very shortly. First of all, what I wanna focus on in this video is the semi-finals. First on Saturday, we're gonna have DFM versus V3. And on Sunday, we're gonna have the Hawks versus Sengaku Gaming. And before anything else, we had to say goodbye to two of our teams, Burning Cortoyama and Axis Crest, who are not making it to playoffs and we're not gonna see them until summer. As I talked about before in my pre-season video, Burning Core, we kinda expected they're gonna be the last. Individually, they're not bad players. My biggest concern with them was that they lack veteran voice in both players and stuff. And unfortunately, it really showed up. Even though they could never win a series, they tied Sengaku Gaming twice, actually. And they also had great solo killers, for example, throughout their games. So while they never were contenders, I really hope that this short amount of time that they were together helped them as getting more experience and the summer they can come back stronger. Now, as for Axis Crest, they were a lot more competitive. They were actually in the playoffs race until the very end with V3 and despite ending the exact same score as V3 because V3 had the better head-to-head -head record they were the ones advancing but they were very close so really I don't want to write them off. If you remember in the previous video I also talked about that Axis Crest didn't have the Korean players in the first week so hopefully now that everyone is together now that the synergy is being built up they're gonna be much stronger for summer. So now let's get into the four teams who actually made playoffs. First of all, V3 Esports. Let me just say that this is not the infamous V3 that people may know about. First of all, they made two upgrades in the top lane and bot lane for this season. And that jungler Hiroki, actually the only Japanese jungle we have in the league right now, he was a grinding Apex Champions queue. He played and streamed every single day. And honestly, that improvement really was visible throughout the split. I think he played phenomenally. And because of that, they were very consistent in beating the teams below them. And even beating teams who ended up above them in the standings like Sengaku Gaming. And the whole picture of the team is even better than what the results show. Because we see had pretty good early games, even against teams like DFM. I could praise V3 as much as I want. And uh, if Sengaku and V3 both end up losing their semifinals, I'm gonna have a lot to say about that matchup next week. For now, obviously, I think the FM is gonna 3-0. This is not really a question. <laughs> but I do think this matchup is not gonna be totally useless because it's gonna kind of show a preview what strength level we can expect from both teams in the week after. So I would obviously recommend watching this match, just saying that expect the DFM 3-0. Next up is Sengaku Gaming on the third place. And before I get into what I think of Sengaku Gaming, first of all, because a lot of people have been asking this, where is Jet? So as you may know, there's this global rule in League of Legends that you can only have two imports per team. And Sengaku already has Elim, the jungler, and Gen, their support. So that leaves us with no free import slots. So did they kick Jet? No, Jet is still on the team because if rumors are true and we can just calculate it. So if the calculations are correct, then Gen should have his residency for summer. Funnily, this is exactly what happened with him on DFM when he was on the bench waiting for Steel to get his residency. But for summer, if Gen actually gets his residency, then the team should be with Jet on the mid lane. But for now with Kakun, what is happening with this team? I have to say in my preseason ranking, I put them third and they ended up being third and they probably are third, but they look a lot more shaky than I originally thought. I was thinking they would be closer to this SAGDFM, but I don't think so. They are there. I really don't think so. Their highs are actually pretty high. Like they can take games out from the top teams, but they can also lose to like burning cores. So they have massive highs and massive lows as well. So how's this team playing? A lot of times on the back of Elim, their new jungler. He definitely has been a shining star of this team. And even Kokun is playing really well. I'm very, very impressed with him. And this is where my problem stems from, is that I don't think Jet coming into this team in summer gonna really fix it. 
because I think their bot lane is just not living up to the hype. Even though Yuhi is one of my favorite players in NGL, and even though Gen obviously used to be the best support in NGL, I feel like maybe because of synergy issues, or maybe simply because time has paused, I don't think this bot lane is really up to the level of the top, top, top teams. So yes, I would still say that they are pro the sword best team. And I think maybe if Ellen gets ahead, maybe if they find some angle, maybe they can go five games. I would rather say Hawks 3-1, but again, maybe five games. But I, I really don't think there's going to be three games where Sengoku just everything clicks and they win them. They don't click that often, unfortunately. And if I mention the Hawks, Let's talk about them as uh, the Hukuoka Sopen host gaming. In somewhat of a similar fashion, I do think the hosts are shaky as well. The reason I put them way above Sengaku Gaming is just because of pure raw skill in each position. Even if they are shaky, they just look better in almost every single role. So I do think they have the edge on that one. But the hosts are really not looking that super, super team that we expected. Throughout the season, I was giving them the benefit of the doubt because obviously they had communication issues. They have Forrest, a new jungler who doesn't speak Japanese just yet. We don't have voice comes published from them just yet, but they promised they're gonna do sometime in the future. So hopefully they're gonna answer some of these questions like how their comms are, who's the main shot caller, can Forrest understand the shot calling? So these are the reasons I think that they maybe are only second best team in the league, but I do think they're better than Sengaku. I would still give a few games to Sengaku because the Hawks can throw, 100% they can throw. And because of that, actually, let me just uh, recap one of the games. I want to look at one of those at least. It was the second match of Sengaku and SAG. And from that series, I'm gonna point out the first game. Because Sengaku had a pretty good early game in that one. They had good rotations from Elim, granted Oriana, many kills during the first 10 minutes of the game. Kinetsu even had a solo kill on the top side against Abby. And even the bot lane was dominating, so when the team gets on the same wavelength, they can be top tier, challenging even the likes of the Hawks and DFM. But the issue is that they just can't keep up the synergy for too long. Even in this game, there came the third dragon, and the Hawks found the perfect angle with the perfect positioning, and Sengaku's fate was sealed with that. Even if it took not one, not even two, but three attempts to finally take down the base, SAG ended up winning the game and later on the match too. This is why I think that this Sunday they may take like a game or two away from the host, but I don't think this wavelength is gonna last for three games. That's that's a lot. And if the hosts end up winning here, I would expect them to then meet DFM in the finals, but this is next week. I'm gonna talk about next week, what's gonna happen there. For now, as you can see, there is one more team left, which is obviously our almighty DFM. I referenced my preseason ranking a lot, but I put them second there. And what do I think of them now? I have to say, I do think DFM are our strongest team right now. I changed my prediction from what I had before the season. I do think they are the best. I did give hosts this benefit of the doubt that if they can get their communication issues sorted, then maybe they can surpass DFM. But for now, DFM is just by far the cleanest team in the LGL. And while DFM is very dominating in LGL right now, it's super hard to rate them, like how good actually they are internationally, because last year was the worst indication anyone could have. They dominated spring, then there comes the MSI, when the top lane literally had a mental breakdown, as well as Horb just having some nerves on international stages, but he really wasn't performing. And then there comes Summer, with all the drama surrounding the FM. But at the end, they actually having a fine roster with Yuta on top and Milani de Carey that they changed for Worlds. So we couldn't really see the FM against non-LGL teams, or at least in the same formation that they dominated LGL with. It's gonna be very interesting to see this formation of the FM against PCS teams, if they get to the PCS, but at this point, like, come on, they, they're gonna get to the PCS. Oreo is back and he's back in form. He got MVP as well for the regular season. Then we have Harp who is, yeah, he has some problems internationally, but if I just look at domestic results, he's definitely up with Gan, like how aggressive the support he is. And we have Ray Farky, who is not an Abby, obviously, but he's definitely a solid top winner. The only issue is just that he haven't had international appearances. 
because he wasn't playing for the FM, that's how the LGL works. But now he's in the FM and it's a very, very synergetic team, is the word even? They are a very coordinated team. If you look at the voice comms, they are actually the only team so far who is posting voice comms. And when it comes to PCS playoffs, I'm gonna make more content on the teams, including translating the FM voice comms. So you're gonna have those content later on as well. For now, just trust me that their voice comms are pretty good. So I think they're just they're just a clean team. And I would be absolutely shocked if they are not the first team getting into the PCS playoffs. Let's just get to the end of this Saturday, the FM versus V3. I expect the FM 3-0, surprise, surprise. And Sunday, Hawks versus Sengaku, I would say 3-1 to the Hawks. And one thing, don't forget that the two teams who are going to be in the semifinals are going to be qualifying already for PCS playoffs. The way it works is that our third and second seed are going to start from PCS planes. That's going to be starting March 11. And our LGL first seed, which is going to be the team who eventually going to win finals, that team is going to start straight from PCS playoffs the stage, main stage, I think how it's called. So they are going to be playing against the likes of CFO or Frank. And if we are at PCS, as you know, LGL is coming to the end soon. There is only four BO5s left in spring. After that, we're going to move on to the PCS playoffs. What is happening there? What is happening to PCS? They just finished the stage one. Everyone has played everyone. And the way PCS works is the four teams on the top called contender teams. They're going to now play a mini round against each other. And the bottom four teams are called the breakout teams. And they're going to play against each other. So the FM Sengaku, you should look for these teams. And whoever ends up being the third seed from us, you should look to the fifth, sixth place teams because that's probably what you're going to face. And this is the team that you should first focus on alongside the two LCO teams we're going to see as well. But my PCS knowledge is nothing compared to people like Western, official PCS English caster. So take it away. Hey guys, Vishian here once again, trying to give you a little bit of a rundown now that we have finished the round robin stage. And now we have a pretty solid idea of the tier rankings. Now, in the last week, we had some of our biggest and most important games, and the tier ranking of these teams did change up quite a lot. CFO are pretty firmly our best team in the league, uh, obviously losing their first series against BYG as they came into the league, but now haven't lost since, looked really, really dominant uh, in pretty much every single one of their series. They did drop one game to Frank, who is, from my perspective, the second best team in the league. They look really, really good. They fall behind sometimes, but off the back of some fantastic team fighting uh, from Pretender and from Jimmy, and they look amazing. So regardless of which of their mid laners they use, look really good. As well as Jiang up in the top lane, honestly. He's a, he's a rookie, but he has been pulling off some incredible stuff, especially on the Aatrox. Uh, just some of his team fighting is phenomenal. His skirmishes as well. He had one of the greatest 2v1 outplays I've seen. Certainly one of the teams to look for. Now further down, I think there is a fairly sizable gap, but Beyond and PSG coming in at third, fourth. Now, Beyond, especially recently, they've started to have 116 on the Huey. And by God, that guy is incredible. He's by far our best Huey. I don't think it's even particularly close. He's so, so good at landing those skill shots. He, I think in particular, is probably the player to watch from the side of BYG. But the whole team as a whole have been playing really well. Driver, of course, he's always solid up in that top lane. And now below them, PSG uh, really looking rough recently. It's hard to say good at all. They, they they lost their series to uh, CFO. Their game one, they got absolutely dominated. It was like a 23 minute game, if I remember correctly. Game two was a long one. They probably should have won, but ended up not closing out the game quick enough, and it was just taken over. 2-0, they lost to CFO. But more surprisingly, in the very last game of the first half of our, our regular season, uh, they were against DCG. And now this is a team that hasn't been looking all that good. Ultimately, they, they lost. No, they lost game one, won game two, and then lost game number three. They had an interesting look on the draft, but DCG came out with probably the greatest draft phase I've ever seen in game number one. Picked Nico first as red side, making it seem like, oh yeah, they're going to have a Nico mid. It's, you know, it's a strong blind pickable mid. Uh, they then picked Caitlyn next, and they held their support all the way to the end, just in case it was Lux, and then put the Nico down in support with the Caitlyn. Obviously having double Caitlyn auto attack range, it was really, really well done, really intelligent, and absolutely decimated Betty and Moody. 
Uh, and now in the bottom group will be... I don't really need to talk about how pigs at West Point, I don't feel. I don't think that the likelihood of them actually making the playoffs is very, very slim. Uh, and so it will be J-Team as well as DCG. Now, J-Team have gone through a lot of roster swaps. They no longer have Waco, which was probably their biggest name player. But in, in, in fairness, they now have a guy called Chichi, and he has been performing relatively well. They seem to like giving him a utility AD carry and, and allowing the rest of the map to carry. And in fairness, Minji has been sort of looking like his summer form again, where he did pick up the MVP. And they're doing better than they were at the start of the split in, in any case. But they are going to be our sixth place team because DCG, as I said, bet PSG, which we didn't expect, but that put them up to fifth. They've started the series season sorry, looking really good uh, and then faltered a little bit in the middle. But getting it together at the end, obviously picking up a win against PSG now confirms pretty much with like 99% certainty that they will be in that, that top six to make playoffs and, and who the LJL and LCO teams will have to go against. And so I think kind of the players to watch out for on that DCG lineup tend to be Chris Scarter and then maybe Tide. Taco at the start of the split had a few good games, but he's been awfully quiet of late. So I think and ultimately 665 Chris Carter, Tide, they're really who you're looking for to to pull out some carry potential from the side of DCG. And so the LJL fans definitely look towards those. Obviously one of your teams will be getting a buy and so they're gonna have to look towards the likes of CFO and Frank who are incredibly scary i mean that'll sort of do us for now i hope to see you guys all in the near future and i hope you keep supporting the ljl and the pcs thank you and as for ljl playoffs this week i really think the fmb3 is going to be our matchup on saturday and the hawks versus sengaku gaming on sunday this is what i expect and this is what you should watch this weekend and if you're a pcs fan this is going to be our first preview of the teams who are going to be playing against your teams. So it's going to be really good seeing a little bit of a glimpse of what's going to happen in March. And if you miss the games this weekend, don't worry, because I'm going to make another video around this time next week. That's why I make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to not miss any of these videos. And if you like our work and if you can afford, we also have a Patreon. All those donations are making sure that the content we produce is getting better and better. And if you just want more news, we are on every possible social media at this point. It's G-Sport Hub everywhere. We are on Twitter, we are on Threads, we are on Blue Sky, and we are also on Facebook. Yes, we're on Facebook. <laughs> We decided to head to the PCS playoffs to open a Facebook page because Facebook is widely used in Taiwan and Hong Kong, so I thought it could be a good source of information for the PCS fans. <laughs> yes, we are on every social media platform! I was going to be the G-Sport Hub in hopefully another insightful video, and see you in the next one. Bye-bye!